news comes first. Good evening, everybody. I'm C.J. Ward. Another week, another round of demonstrations. You're looking at a live picture from Berkeley, where hundreds of people march through the streets tonight. The protesters demanding a change after two grand juries decided not to indict white police officers in the deaths of two unarmed black men. You're looking at a freeway shot where the freeway has been shut down by the demonstrators. Now, they first showed up at the police department where they were met with a line of officers in riot gear. The protesters then stopped traffic on nearby I-80 freeway, and they even shut down railroad traffic for a time. So far, nobody has been hurt that we know of, and we do not know if anybody has been arrested. Santa Barbara police are busy with more demonstrations here. No justice, no peace. No racism. This protest last night drew about 200 people. Extra police were called in to keep an eye on things from the courthouse to city hall. And at times, the group stopped in the middle of intersections for several minutes. One resident told us police are using restraint. People need to vent. I mean, it's a serious matter. Uh, it's a nationwide problem, and I think people need to vent. It's still new, and it's, I mean, this is the beginning, so until they see things getting out of hand, they're at least they're there to prevent it and stop it. So, better than not enough this early in the game. Santa Barbara police have dealt with similar rallies in recent years over the gang injunction and the Occupy Wall Street movement. Two UC Santa Barbara Black Studies professors are weighing in on the growing discontent across the country. As News Channel 3's Elise Martinez reports, the professors blame it on a long history of injustice in America. A black person is killed every 28 hours by uh, police in this country. Gay Teresa Johnson, a professor of black studies at UCSB, says the mass protests are overdue. I can't breathe! I can't breathe! This is a problem that we have had for a long time. It didn't start with Mike Brown or Trayvon Martin. It doesn't end with Eric Garner. Her colleague, Professor Jeffrey Stewart, says the killing of Eric Garner leaves them to wonder if the justice system is working against people of color. So here's a person who's basically dead for no reason, yet there's no indictment. So that leads many people to feel and reinforce the situation and the belief in the black community that you can be killed with impunity in America and there's no justice. Stewart believes something needs to change. The grand jury system itself may need to be looked at. Maybe in these cases where you have the prosecutor and the grand jury essentially indicting one of their own, you need to bring in a special prosecutor, someone who's outside of the culture. While many have denounced the grand jury decision not to indict the police officer in Garner's chokehold death, some believe they did the right thing. And uh, our hearts have to go out to the uh, Garner family. Having said that, I do not believe, I feel strongly the police officer should not have been indicted. We deserve to work in dignity. We deserve education, not incarceration. We deserve to be able to be mobile on the streets of our own communities without having to worry that whatever we do could be a death sentence. At UC Santa Barbara, Elise Martinez, News Channel 3. A victory of sorts for Ventura residents upset that a treatment center for the criminally insane is operating in their neighborhood. Instead, comrade, uh, CONREP psychiatrists will treat the patients in their homes. The conditional release program opened up at the 40 West Santa Clara Street about a month ago, upsetting, upsetting neighbors. Now, city officials admitted they made a mistake by approving the permit that let that facility open up there. Now, those same officials are trying to get CONREP officials to move their facility somewhere else. They've appealed my decision that they don't belong in that location from a zoning perspective. So ultimately that appeal would require us to have a hearing before the Planning Commission. We haven't scheduled that yet because they're also at the same time actively looking for a new location. One patient being treated there is David Adias. He was found criminally insane after he intentionally killed four people with his car in Isla Vista back in 2001. And Nicholas Bendel, who, Bendel, who you just saw there, who killed a man with a hatchet in Santa Maria, will begin treatment at that same facility in the next 90 days. New at 11 tonight, a report on how Santa Barbara County is managing the state's controversial prison realignment program, otherwise known as AB 109. Hundreds of nonviolent convicted felons transferred from state prisons to already overcrowded county jails. Keith Carls reports. 
Santa Barbara County is tracking success or failure of AB 109 with an annual evaluation done by UC Santa Barbara. We are able to show uh, a 30 percent uh, recidivism rate for our post-release community supervision offenders. Seven out of ten state prisoners sent to the county are not reoffending upon their release, according to the most recent UCSB statistics. And we're doing that through enhanced supervision, through evidence-based programming. We assess the offenders as they come out of prison, so we know what services will benefit them. It's five or six times more expensive to incarcerate somebody than it is to treat them. County Supervisor Steve Lavanino says the county is benefiting from successful prevention and intervention programs funded in part by AB 109. Originally we had a completely broken system. The state recidivism rate was close to 70 percent and we had no programs in place uh, for criminals that were exiting the state prison system. They're coming into our local system where we have better case control. Uh, our probation officers now are dealing with a 40 to 1 ratio instead of what parole was dealing with was a 70 to 80 to 1 caseload. Lavanino says assessing near and long-term impacts of prison realignment is a work in progress. One of the things that Santa Barbara County did a little bit different than other counties is we also put money in to make sure that we were studying what's working, what isn't working as we move through the system. Because if you can't measure it, you can't manage it, you can't fix it. Prison realignment under AB 109 and the current recidivism rate will be discussed by the Santa Barbara County Board of Supervisors tomorrow when it meets in Santa Maria. A large tree collapsed on a home in Carpinteria tonight. It happened on Carpinteria Avenue. Here's how it looked. One person had to be evacuated, but the roof was not badly damaged. A crew from Branch Out Tree Care in Carpinteria says the drought did play a role. It's a goner, yeah. The whole root system came up out of it. It pulled up probably from the drought conditions and then the moisture that hit the ground in the weight of the tree, too. It's a lot of them falling over right now. And the tree appears to be a 60-year-old acacia tree. Well, we have breaking news right now out of Santa Maria. Let's toss it to News Channel 3 reporter Keith Carls with the very latest on the situation there. Keith, what can you tell us? CJ, this happened within the last half hour near the corner of Cook and Smith Streets, not far from the center of downtown here in Santa Maria. Santa Maria police tell me that they got calls of what appeared to be a shooting. Witnesses, at least people who called 911, said they heard what appeared to be gunshots. When police arrived here on scene, they found an adult male lying in an alleyway right around the corner from me, behind me. This is where the crime scene has essentially been established for Santa Maria police. The victim has been taken to Marion Medical Center here in Santa Maria. Where the gunshot wound to the upper body, although I did hear from other officers that uh, he was actually shot in the face. Now, witnesses are being interviewed by police. This is an active crime scene. Right now, we don't have much more than that, although we do know that it was a shooting and an adult male was taken to the hospital with a gunshot wound. We'll have more as it becomes known to us. Uh, sending it back to you now in the studio, CJ. Okay, thank you for that update, Keith. A new way to help the homeless is getting rave reviews this holiday, a mobile shower truck started making the rounds today and reaction to it is heartwarming. News Channel 3 reporter Tracy Lair is live in Goleta and Tracy a hot shower isn't something the homeless take for granted. Hot is what we heard all day. They're so thrilled with the heat, the hot water. And the city of Goleta just approved plans for that trailer to come here to the Goleta Valley Community Center once a month. Today it stopped at St. Michael's Church in Isla Vista. Homeless men and women line up to take hot showers in this mobile trailer. It's parked outside St. Michael's Church in Isla Vista every Monday afternoon. These people have provided something that uh, I think is near miraculous. I, um, to me, it's people caring and it's proof that there's a dear Lord to me. After showering, they have a chance to change their clothes, get their old clothes cleaned, and enjoy a free meal. They go look for a job and then you, you know, try and get up off the streets. It's always better when you smell clean and you're in good, fresh, clean clothes and you feel better about yourself as well, you know what I'm saying? And your hair looks so pretty. Thank you. <laughs> Volunteers include UCSB students. They keep the showers squeaky clean. With the help of donations, Christ Lutheran Church in Goleta bought the trailer, named Showers of Blessings, and hired an operations manager to take it around. They come out, step out, and they're 
wow, and they look like a different person, and they just are so grateful, you know. And you can just see the self-esteem start rising, and, and you know, just, they're different people, you know. We really love it. The hot water. <laughs> when you're dirty, it's a little, you know, you're kind of like, well, i got to change today. I'm going to, you know, there's places we got to go to. And it's like, nah, but with a, with a shower trailer, it's like, we got to go to the thing on three. I'm going to go take a shower today, get ready, and it's wonderful. Clydesdale says it's nice to keep his well-known mustache clean. They're all clean now, see? <laughs> and he's got quite a mustache. People will become, be able to come here on the last Monday morning of every month here to the Goleta Valley Community Center to get cleaned up as well. And all of that water doesn't go to waste. It goes to water the lawns at the places where the trailer hooks up to the water. And right now, that's at the church in Isla Vista and here at the Community Center. Reporting live in Goleta, Tracy Lair, News Channel 3. All right. Very nice service. Thank you, Tracy. The 28th Annual Unity Telethon Celebration kicks off this Saturday. Unity Shop is the single largest direct distributor of food, clothing, and basic necessities for low-income families in our community. More than 300 other nonprofit agencies help out year-round. And you can lend a hand by donating to the event this Saturday from 4 o'clock in the afternoon until 8 o'clock at night at 110 West Sola Street and at the News Channel 3 studios. We will be live. The phone bank number you can use to call in is 845-5555. Again, that number is 845 845- 5555, and of course, you will hear that number quite a bit this weekend. Gearing up for the next big earthquake, some building owners will be forced to follow new rules. We'll tell you what they are coming up on News Channel 3 at 11. Drive through the weekend and a dry, warm start to the work week. Good Monday evening, everyone. Don't get too used to it, though. More rain is in your forecast. I'll let you know when you'll need the umbrella when News Channel 3 at 11 returns. In just the last three weeks, News Channel 3 showed you how local first responders are changing tactics after the IV tragedy. We took you to Lake Kachuma and the next drastic steps needed should the drought continue. We explored a local training camp with global benefits, the dangers of pot farms in our foothills, and asked why it's taking PG&E so long to switch customers off the grid and onto solar. Plus, up and down the coast, live team election coverage you'd only expect from the power of three. the holidays at Ross and all through the store there are gifts more gifts oh gifts galore in every nook and every cranny there are presents for all something sweet for your granny so to Ross you must go and take the whole list you wouldn't want anyone to think they were missed so many good things there's no need for stress and the best part of all you'll find them for less happiest holidays from Ross when he reunites Aaron Paul and Kristen Ritter. That's a rare thing, isn't it? So rare and huge. Plus, the guy who let himself be snake bait. Oh, my God. New Kimmel, tonight on ABC. Buildings in Los Angeles will be overhauled soon to prepare for the next big earthquake. Mayor Eric Garcetti announced LA's new earthquake plan today. He recommends securing the water supply by installing seismic resistant water pipes. Thousands of older buildings will have to be retrofitted to meet those standards. The most dangerous buildings are called uh, so called soft story buildings built before 1980 with parking garages underneath. The biggest risk to our lives is posed by our older buildings. 
because the harsh reality is that no building code in the world is retroactive. And however much we improve the building code, it doesn't make older buildings disappear. There are 16,000 of those older buildings, and retrofitting is expected to cost hundreds of millions of dollars. Now, the cost will be paid by the building owners and then passed down to the tenants and to businesses. Mm. Maintenance in the Douglas Family Preserve is stirring up controversy tonight. Some people say that clearing the old brush away looks good. Others say the maintenance crews went too far by cutting down trees. Some of the brush has been turned into mulch. The work is supposed to be finished by December 19th. We are counting on a couple of really nice days of weather, and then we have more rain on the way, which is real nice. As yes, well. you do. So we get the best of both worlds. We do. And you know, the sunshine will be out there plenty tomorrow. Now tonight we're seeing some cooling, but still some pretty warm temperatures for December standards, mostly in the 50s out there. Clear skies being reported around Santa Barbara, Ventura, even into San Ynez tonight. But some fog is expected later this evening out across the Central Coast. Did see some of that this morning, and we expect to see at least areas or some patchy fog by tomorrow morning as well. Dry conditions out there tonight. We did see a little bit of wet weather in Northern California earlier today. Now, the big story is the approaching storm. And before we get to the rain and the wind associated with it, let me talk about the high surf. This advisory already in effect, and it continues all the way until Saturday afternoon. For the Central Coast, the largest surf comes with the second wave. Thursday into Friday, could see breakers near 15 to 20 feet. Ventura County, largest surf Friday and Saturday. At that time, we're talking about breakers between 8 and and 12 feet. Now, as we look ahead, high pressure still keeps our weather dry, quiet as well through about Wednesday. Then looking off to the west, here's the developing storm that's going to be on the radar very shortly. In fact, it's going to slam into the coastline late Thursday, continue through Friday. I think the heaviest rain and wind will fall late Thursday night through early Friday, and then we'll see some lingering showers on Friday during the day, and then, of course, the very high surf associated with this storm system and all the energy moving towards our coastline. Let me show you feature cast hour by hour. Generally sunny tomorrow, but as we head towards Wednesday, notice this, the clouds beginning to increase, and as we make our way past Wednesday night and into Thursday, here's the approaching cold front, 9 a.m., some rain into the Bay Area, and look how big this front is. We're expecting hours of steady, heavy rainfall. In fact, at times, rainfall rates could be in excess of a half an inch, maybe three quarters of an inch per hour and it looks like this could last at least in terms of steady rainfall a good four to six hours again showers possible beyond that initial cold front time looking at your forecast tomorrow some patchy fog possible otherwise looking at a nice and sunny day and i think the best chances of fog are out there mostly north of santa barbara Ventura county temperatures very warm into the 70s santa barbara seven day forecast we hold on to the 70s through wednesday rain late in santa barbara thursday night uh, most of the heavy stuff overnight, and then some on again, off again showers Friday before we dry things out. Ventura should be pretty similar timing as well to Santa Barbara. Rain, rain very late Thursday night. But for areas north of Point Conception, rain during the evening hours, gusty winds, showers continuing on Friday. San Ynez Valley, 70s here through Wednesday, rain Thursday and Friday, and then CJ, we're talking about that next storm, could be next Monday and Tuesday, another decent-sized storm. So we have two good storms in front of us. It's looking that way, yeah, it looks good. All right, All right. well, thank yeah. you. Huge flames lit up downtown Los Angeles this morning. An apartment building under construction caught fire. The blaze was so intense it caught nearby buildings on fire. As reporter Ted Rowland shows us, the inferno shut down two freeways. Oh, my God. Flames so high they could be seen for miles and heat so intense, fire trucks were initially forced to keep back from the scene. You're talking about a blowtorch of heat on two major high rises in the downtown Los Angeles area. The inferno ignited overnight at an apartment complex under construction next to LA's main downtown freeway before firefighters could get close enough to battle the blaze, two adjacent high rise buildings started to catch fire. They did have papers that were on desks, they had blinds, they had window screens that actually started catching on fire or melting due to the amount of radiant heat. More than 250 firefighters converged on the raging fire, running hoses by hand to get close while trying to prevent the other two high-rise buildings from becoming a total loss. We had the intense heat that was affecting the freeway, that was affecting the high-rise, and to, to get resources and everything down here was very difficult. And then to know that a high-rise is starting to take off behind you, that, that is an extreme situation. 
construction site is likely a complete loss. Firefighters were able to save the two other buildings. There were no injuries associated with this fire, and at this point, no official cause. Ted Rollins, ABC News, Los Angeles. And frightening moments for diners at a Southern California restaurant. A car drives through the window. We'll have that story coming up on News Channel 3 at 11. Armed with our exclusive live storm tracker network, no one keeps you better prepared than the First Alert Weather Team, the largest weather team on local television. If a new business is coming to town or another is going out of business, if it's going to cost you more or could save you money, you need to know about it. That's why News Channel 3 brings you key to your finances every Wednesday at 6, brought to you by Community West Bank. Let's work together. The human body is capable of astonishing things. While you may not perform Olympian feats, normal wear and tear can take its toll on your joints. When hip or knee pain affects your life, you need care worthy of a gold medal. The Joint Replacement Program at the Cottage Center for Orthopedics. Our board-certified specialists can help you return to your active lifestyle quickly with less pain and greater mobility. For hip or knee pain, go for the gold. The Joint Replacement Program at the Cottage Center for Orthopedics. Call today or attend one of our informative seminars. This holiday season, it's customer appreciation at Subway. We're saying thanks with two of your favorite six-inch sandwiches for $2 each, the meatball marinara and the cold cut combo. Join our customer appreciation celebration today. Subway, eat fresh. This holiday season, give the gift that's hard to wrap, but easy to give. Give a steal. Legendary chainsaws. Hardworking steel blowers and the full line of quality steel outdoor power equipment. Steel. Built in America. Sold locally. And the gift that's number one on everybody's wish list. Visit steeldealers.com. Salutations. It's me, Skeletor. Remember the exaltation you felt when you got me for the holidays? Well, feel that again with a new Honda CRV during Happy Honda Days. A rear view camera comes standard, so you can look out for danger. Now I must go and crush He Man. <laughs> go, clumsy mortals! Get something you love at the Happy Honda Day sales event where all 2015 models come standard with a rear view camera. So tell me, why did we make this stop? I heard the boss got a last minute request from a boy who was really good this year. Gotta love Santa. He never wants to disappoint the kids. And Santa knows you can get some really unique holiday gifts from Goodwill for a great price. Smart elf. That's why he drives the sleigh. Help spread peace, cheer, and goodwill this holiday season. Purchase from your local Goodwill store. You'll be helping your local community keep its spirit alive. News Channel 3 brought to you by Land Rover, above and beyond. The Dos Pueblos High School Orchestra will show off its stuff at the happiest place on earth. The orchestra auctioned and auditioned, and it was picked to play with hundreds of other groups from around the country at Disneyland coming up in March. But now the students need to raise about $4,500 to get there. One way they're going to do that, a winter concert tomorrow starting at 7 o'clock tomorrow night at Ealing's Performing Arts Center at the high school. Now, ticket sales and prices depend on how much you want to donate to help them out. Scary moments for a group of Southern California diners when a car plows through a window. It happened this afternoon in Garden Grove, just south of Los Angeles. A woman behind the wheel was in a minor accident and then panicked. That's when she lost control of the car and careened into the restaurant, hitting two people. The driver was also injured. All three people were taken to the hospital. Tis the season for holiday flash mobs. We'll show you how one local high school pulled off the performance at the airport. In sports, Green Bay and Atlanta combined for 80 points on Monday Night Football, plus a fantastic finish in the Clippers game. And the Gauchos trying for a signature win in the heart of Texas tonight. And it was a thriller at SMU. Sports is next. Your CSB back in front. Union Bank, proud to celebrate what's right with your community. Like the organic soup kitchen, with a five-year tradition providing wholesome.